Today we're going to review what you already learned about lists and we're going to talk a lot more about accessing elements and the other way that you can traverse a list. Let's just review what is a list. Remember that it is the fundamental mechanism in Python for collecting multiple values. That means it's a container that stores a collection of values or elements. It can store more than one value, which is very useful. These values are called elements, and they are stored in sequential order. So when you put in the first one, it stays the first one, the second one. They stay in order when you add them to the list. The list can grow or shrink in size, so it's not a set size. It can The size is flexible. And it can store any data. It can have integers, floats, strings, booleans. It can even have a list of lists. But whatever you do store in it should be related. So I shouldn't have a list that is an integer, and then a float, and then a string, and then a boolean. It should all be related data. To create a list, you give it a name, and you use the square brackets. The square brackets are going to be on the other side of the equal sign. So when I use the square brackets like this, it creates a list. It can either be empty or with data, but the square brackets separated by an equal sign creates a list. I add elements by using the append method. Okay, remember our method uses the dot notation with my object, which is my list in front, the method, and then whatever I'm going to be appending. Now we also learned how to access elements by using the square brackets, but in this instance it's called a subscript. Each element in the list stays in order. It is sequential, but you can change the order. You learned about that with sort. It still has an order. Each element has an integer position called an index. So if I did change the sequence, then the elements are still there. They just get a new index. But everything has a position, and that position is identified by an index, which is an integer. To access a list element, use the subscript operator. So the square brackets are called the subscript operator. It's not going to be separated by an equals. So I have my list name, and then I have the square bracket right away. Inside the square bracket, it cannot be empty. It has to have the index number. So this index number refers to a value. And it gets a little bit tricky when you first get used to it. And that's why we're going to do some time practicing. So I've got my index, and I've got the actual value itself. So here, I've got my list is my array, my list. I'm going to access what's an index 5. And the value is 10. So it's actually the sixth element in the list, and the value is 10. Now sometimes I need to take the value out, and I can still access it by using the index. So this statement looks at the fourth value, my list index 3, which is the fourth value. Whatever value is stored there is going to get assigned to number. So both of these examples access an element using the index. But the index isn't the actual value. It's just telling you the position. In our first lecture, we learned that there are two ways you can traverse a list. Remember, traversing means to go and access each element in order. The two ways are by index or by element. Now we learned in our first example how to just do it by element. And this is really handy whenever you want to access every element and you don't need to know the index. I'm just going to go every one, like printing. It's a perfect example. If I'm searching for something, I can just search through the whole list and see if I find it. Now this works many times, but sometimes I do need to traverse the list by index because the index could matter. I need to know the position. So to, to traverse a list by index, I'm still going to use a for loop and the count variable in my for loop. So I do for count or for x equals for i. That count variable is going to be the index. It's the index reference. When you're doing this, make sure that you do not go out of range. And the easiest way to do this is to use the length function, len, of the index. It's always going to tell me how many elements there are. So if I have 10 elements, the len will be 10, and I would do 0 to 9. So it's kind of built in. Use the len function to give me the length. 
When I use that for the range, it's always going to go up to but not include that number. So here's an example. I'm using I. I is kind of like short for index. For I in range, and instead of putting a number here because I want to be careful that I don't have an out of range error, I'm going to take the length of my list and I'm going to go up to it but not include it. Now I'm going to print my list and I have to use the subscript operator and I is going to stand in for my index. So it's like when I had for element in my list, here I have for I, it's my index, I'm going to start at zero, I'm going to go up to. So it's going to take the first element, which is zero, and it's going to print the value. Then it's going to go to the next one, one, and print the value. So it's not printing I, it's printing the value, that's the position, and it's printing the value stored at that location in my list. Now, this can be handy if I actually want to print the index. So I want to say which element I'm printing and print the element. So I can, it comes in pretty handy. I can print I, so it's going to start with 0 and what's in the 0 position. It's going to print 1 and what's in the first position.